All right. How are y'all doing tonight? Oh, so you're gonna learn something about me here in a second. That was kind of whack. Let me hear it again. How are y'all doing tonight? All right. You're still struggling. If you don't know me, my name is JT. I work here at Scottsdale as our missions coordinator. So what I'm able to do is I work with missions partners here in America, overseas, all over the place, setting up things for us to be able to live on mission and love others through service. So I don't know a lot of you. Unfortunately, this is my first time up here with you guys, but I don't know a lot of you, but I want to get to know a lot of you here. So first thing I want you to know about me, I just graduated recently from UNCW and I graduated. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It was long and grueling, but it was worth it. So some of y'all that are thinking like, oh, the parents in here are probably nodding their head like, yeah, go. Um, but I graduated elementary education. So when I said like that was whack, I'm used to a bunch of fourth and fifth graders screaming their heads off. We love them though. Not really, but we'll take them. All right. So when I'm when I say like I need some energy, I need some interaction. I'm gonna look for your help. So within learning elementary ed, and something that was really important to me is I gotta make a connection with every single one of you. It's like that was like the first day in. Like you gotta make a connection to your students. All right. So we're gonna do that right here. Can you work with me on that? All right. So here's what I need. I need everybody stand up. Stand it up. Get the legs moving. I know you just sat down, but get the legs moving. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna tell you some things about me. And if you're like, you know what, JT, that's me too. I want you to sit down. All right. And that hopefully at the end of this, everybody's sitting down. So I have a connection with everyone. Got it? Cool. All right. First thing, I'm a big sports guy. So I love sports. I played sports my whole life. I played basketball. I played football. I played lacrosse. I played it all. So if you're a sports person, take a seat. Ooh, I got a lot of y'all. That's awesome. All right. Next thing. I think I'm going to get some of some people right here. I love to paint. I'm an art guy, I love painting. I like painting certain things. And my next thing, I'll tell you what I like to paint here in a second, and they kind of go together. So sports people, art people that like to paint sit. Next thing, I like shoes a lot. I rock with shoes, heavy, so much so, I combine the art and the shoes together, I make custom shoes. So if you're a shoes person, okay, I got some of y'all here. How many we got? Okay, a few. Next, I love to cook. I enjoy cooking a ton. It kind of has, <laughs> some of us are still standing for that, but I kind of have to cook. I don't make a lot of money, so we'd be cooking a lot. So I like to cook. Okay, hopefully I can get some few people here because this is my last one I got. Shucks. I'm a huge music guy. So I listen to music 24 seven, constantly, forever and ever. I play music, I play guitar. Okay, hold the phone. Hold up, wait a minute. We got how many, six? Y'all got to work on this a little bit. Y'all got to get your interests up a little bit. I, see. I, okay, here we go. This is for Heather Brown. I love animals, wink. All right. Well, if you're still standing, sit down. I'm going to find something that I connect with you guys with. All right. But think about that because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come find y'all. So you got to know me. I've got to know you a little bit. I've got a connection with a lot of y'all. But the main thing I really, really love is I love this church. I love this community. I love serving with God's people. And I've grew up in this church every single day. So another connection that I know every single one of us makes is I sat in these seats just like you did. The same ones that you're sitting in. I grew up in Scottsdale students. It's something that this leadership here has poured into me as well. And I'm so blessed to be able to stand up here and say and present God's word together with us today. So that's my connection that I guarantee every single one of you have. So as we're about to dive into what we're talking about tonight, what are we talking about? It's the real question. So we are talking about how to create a rhythm of service and missions within our lives every single day. How to create that rhythm of missions and service in our life every single day. It's a hard thing to do, but we're going to look at that. God has given us some steps and a process to dive into so we can make that happen within our lives. But we recognize it's going to take work. The word rhythm means it takes dedication. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes consistency. And we're going to look at some text from God's word that kind of teaches us how to do that. All right. So like I said, I'm elementary. I need some interaction. So when I say, all right, I need someone all right back. So all right. All right. All right here we go. Love it. Before we jump in, let's pray. All right. Father God, we oh, appreciate that. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to be here in this time right now. I pray that all of our distractions and burdens will be cast aside and allow us to focus on you. Focus on your word. Focus on 
what you have for us in this time and let the Holy Spirit impact our hearts and our minds in this time. And we glorify you in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I wasn't able to be here last week, but I was able to watch a little bit about what Stephanie and Tucker talked about. And they did an incredible job talking about why we serve. So they gave us the understanding of why do we serve? And they did a great job talking about what Jesus did when he, here, when he lived on earth here, because he was the excellent, the excellent example for service. He washed people's feet. He ended up serving so much, he died for us. All right, they did an incredible job. And something Tucker talked about that I want to bring back up is that serving others should never be out of season. Serving others should never be out of season. I know it's called serve season, but this is a, this is a season that doesn't end. This is a lifestyle. This is a rhythm we're trying to make in our lives. So our goal of service is to be consistent always, forever and ever in everything that we do. So let's look at our text for tonight. We're going to be looking at 1 Peter chapter 4. If you have your Bibles with me, you can turn with me in that. I'll have it up here. We'll be reading it together. But let's check this out. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. It says this. The end of things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober-minded for prayer. Above all, maintain constant love, constant love with one another, since love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Just as each of you has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. If anyone speaks, let it be one who speaks of God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything and to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. An impactful text, something that Peter wrote to us and give us these kind of process of how we kind of make service and missions a rhythm of our life every single day. I think there's some great stuff he pours out and gives us the steps and a process to kind of follow here. A lot of things we do in life, we need steps and processes. Sometimes we, for people that cook, you got to follow a recipe. For sports people that when we made that connection, you got to go to practice, you got to work on your skills, you got to do drills, then you can play the game. There's always a process that we follow here. And I think God pour, gives us a process of how to make that rhythm within this section. But before we dive into this, there's some reminders God has given us in all throughout his word that we got to talk about first. So if we're going to talk about service, we got to start at the base level. And that is that we must know Christ personally to serve him and others. We can't do anything else without that. That's where we have to start. Without Christ, it's meaningless. So if you're sitting here today, okay, how do I make a rhythm of life of service in my life? You got to know Christ first. You have to know that's your foundation. Everything is built on that. John 15 says this, I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. This is Jesus talking directly to his people saying, "Ah, you can do nothing without me. We can do nothing without Christ. So if we're going to serve, that also fits within that. He says, you can do nothing without me. We can do nothing of service without him. So if you're sitting, so, you're someone who's sitting in here, and you don't really know what that kind of means. What does that mean to know Christ personally? It means this incredible story that God created each and every single one of us and loved us so much that he created us perfect, that we were living with him in community with him, but we disobeyed him. We sinned against him, and because of that, we needed to be separated from God. We needed to be separated from him because God cannot know sin. And because of our sin and our mistakes, we deserve death. That's our penalty for that. But God being the incredible God that he is, he gave us hope. And that hope comes from a man named Jesus Christ. And he challenges us to live in a way that is honoring to God. So why, how did he do that? He gave the example of Jesus. Jesus came, he lived just like we did, but he didn't make the same mistakes. He didn't sin. He didn't diso- disobey God. But he, poured the pe- he bore the penalty that we deserved instead. So that death penalty that we were supposed to take, he took that on for us. And he sacrificed himself because he was the only sacrifice able to be made because he himself is God and he loves us so much. So where do we sit with that? We have two options with that. We can recognize the work that Jesus did and live for him and love him for it and see that he is the only way to be back with God. And that leads to eternal love and care and present in the presence of God. But the secondary thing is we can disregard that and move with on our lives, living how we do, disobeying him, seeking what we want, and that leads to eternal separation from him and eternal torture. If that's a story you've not really heard before, you're not very familiar with, I challenge you in this time, I plead, I beg with you, 
Talk to your small group leaders. That's what they're there for. They would love to talk through that with you. But like I said, that's the foundation. You have to know that. If you do not know Christ personally, service is not for you. Secondary, what's another reminder we need? We need a place to serve. We're going to be talking about service of how to make that a rhythm in our lives. If you don't have a place to do it, how are you going to make a rhythm? Let's be honest, right? If you don't have a place you can do that, you need, you cannot serve. So, yes, you need a place. That's a church. That is a church community. That's a body of believers coming together, working with the same goal in mind, which is the pursuit of God through service and through love. So I challenge you in this time, if you do not have a community of believers, people that want to know more about Christ, I find one. Scotts Hill is that place for me. It has been all my life. We have opportunities to serve every single Sunday with all kinds of missions partners, and we will give you the tools and enable you to be able to continue strong in your service towards God. That I think, I like to think Scotts Hill is very similar to the early church of Acts that the early church of Acts will did anything they possibly could to help one another. You need this, I got you. You need this, I got you. They had their other people's interests in mind before their own. And I hope and I pray that at the end of the day, Scott, the members of Scott Silva do the exact same thing. So if you do not have a place, a church that you call your home, once again, talk to your small group leaders, talk to me, talk to Tucker, talk to Stephanie. We would love to get you plugged in here at Scott Silva and going through these next steps of what that looks like. So those are the two reminders. You got to have those things before we can dive into this first Peter text. So let's look for our first point today. There's three things in this text that I think God provides for us. Let's take out the first one. The first one is that God provides the framework for our lives of service. God provides the framework for our lives of service. First Peter talks about this, but I think it's more clearly talked about by Jesus himself. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6. This is a time where Jesus is preaching in the Sermon on the Mount, and he's just gone through and talked about all things that we shouldn't be anxious about. He says, hey, don't be anxious because I've got you. He says, I've got the birds. I've got them taken care of. I've got the plants. I've got them taken care of. So much more do I love you. Don't be anxious about anything. But then he says this. He says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. These things that were provided to the things that they were anxious about. But I love that first part. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And where do we see that in 1 Peter? Well, let's check it out. 1 Peter, chapter, 1 Peter verse 7. It says, The end of things is near, therefore be alert and sober-minded in prayer. How does that fit? Where are we looking at that? The end of things is near. The kingdom of God is coming. It's coming closer every single day. So what do we need to do? We need to be alert and sober-minded in prayer, which is exactly what God would be doing what Jesus Christ himself here on earth would be doing. He would be alert. He would be so reminded in prayer. And then it says this in verse 11, the second half of 11, so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. That's pursuing God's kingdom. Giving all the glory to God because only he is worthy of it. That's pursuing God's kingdom. So like I said, I'm elementary ed, so I need y'all's help. I'm a big sports guy too. I like football. Every throw at the field goal post. We're giving three points to the offense. Every throw them up. Some of y'all not throw them up. What's up? What's up with that? Come on now. Field goal post. All right. Left side. This is going to be great. I'm ready. I'm feeling it. All right. The left side. We're making these guidelines, these foundations for our lives, these guardrails that God has for us, this framework. The left side. Seek his kingdom. Seek his kingdom. All right, that's the left side we have. The right side now, we have pursuing his righteousness, seeking his righteousness first. And smack dab in the middle of that is where we want to be. We want to be in a life honoring to God. These are the guidelines God has given us. This is the framework. And God says this, everything that you do should fit between these two things. Decision time is coming up for a lot of us. I think we'd all agree with that. Some of you seniors, you're like coming right now. Shucks. We're about to graduate here soon, right? Kind of anxious. God's given us the framework for everything in lives. He said, seek my kingdom, seek my righteousness. And what's right in the middle of that? Us. It's where he wants us to be. So if you're making this decision, cast the anxieties away. He's given us the framework. God's will isn't this tightrope that he asks us to follow. Like, oh, if you make one step, you're out. No, he's made it clear. These are the guidelines. Seek my kingdom, 
seek my righteousness. Glorify me before yourself and act like I would. He's given us this framework and service fits in this thing very clearly. So to the first thing we have to do and that Peter talks about is find this framework for our lives. So if we're gonna make a rhythm of service within our life, we gotta stay in this framework, all right? He's given us the boundaries and it's free to work, all right? That's our first point. Second point, here we go. What is, what's the second thing God provides? God provides the means for how we serve. He provides the means for how we serve. He tells us how to do it. How we do it is love. Easy word to say, hard word to do. That's the means. Love is the means for service. Service without love is meaningless. Without love, service is meaningless. Let's see where he says that in First Peter. He talks about it in verses 8 and 9. He says, and Above all, maintain constant love with one another, since love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable with one another without complaining. And when he's talking about this covers a multitude of sins, he's saying have love so much on the forefront of your brain, so much as your focus, that if someone sins against you, boom, it bounced right off. You didn't even realize it. Your focus was on love. Your focus is on being on a constant love for one another. But I love how he starts this. Love, how huh? you get that? I love how he starts this. Above all, he pumps the brakes and says, whoa, before we get into anything else, above all, this is top priority. Remain constant in love with one another. Remain constant in love with one another. Now, why does, where is Peter getting this from? He's like, Peter, you're cool and all, but like, where are you getting this from? And this verse is going to sound very familiar because Abriella stole my thunder up here. So let's also look at 1 John chapter 3, the exact one she read. But let's read it again. And you've already read it once, so you're already familiar with it. So listen in here. It says this. This is how we have come to know love, that he laid down his life for us, that we should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has the world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need but withholds compassion from him, how does God's love reside in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and truth. Peter gets it because he was with Jesus. He saw what Jesus did. He's like, yo, remember that, that gospel we just talked about? I laid my life down. Jesus laid down his life for us in service for us. That's the example we have. Like what Tucker and Stephanie talked about last week. That we should also lay down our lives for brothers and sisters. He was the example for us. But the last thing he says, and he ends it all together, little children, hey, listen in. Children, they're quick to, quick to forget. Their, their attention's all over the place. Little children, listen in. Let us not love in word or speech, but in action and truth. And I think that very much directly supports service. Because we serve with our actions. You can talk the talk all you want. We serve with our actions. And when we do it, we better be doing it in truth. Now, everybody take a deep breath. Oh, one more. I need that one. So God provided the means for us to serve. He's provided this means. But the cool thing about this, this love is that it's two kinds of love. All right. It's two way street here. God's provided the means for us to do the service. And that's through love. Everything we do to serve should be through love. He says, above all, be constant in love. But later on in this, in 1 Peter 4, he says this. And if anyone speaks, let it be one who speaks God's words. That if anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides. So he's saying, hey, pour out your love for others. Your, all your service should come from love. But recognize, my love is going to fuel you. You're going to love others with everything you have because I'm going to keep fueling you. I'm going to strengthen you because I love you so much. We can recognize service is hard. Our first natural instinct is not going to be to love. It's not mine. I can guarantee that one. I'm thinking about myself. And it gets tiring when you're slowly working on, yeah, I got to love, I got to love, I got to love. And if I'm working on, my, working on loving, but I'm depending on my own strength, I'm going to fail every single day. We like quick. We like fast. Random question. Who likes microwaves? Anybody microwave folks? Like we talked about cooking. Who like uses the microwave all the time? Ramen people? Oh, okay, there's some of y'all out here. What's the best flavor of ramen? I'm not going to lie. What y'all got? Chicken. Chicken. Is that the one? Ugh. I don't know about that one. Any of whom. Sorry. That was a little tangent. Chucks. 
But we like microwaves. I'm gonna throw my little tinfoil hat on here. I'm pretty sure those are terrible for you. I'm pretty sure it's probably gonna affect us later on. But ramen still tastes pretty good. But anywho, we like microwaves. We like that press the button, beep, 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 let it go. Stop it at the one second you have to. Stop it at the one second, open that thing up. But within 30 seconds, we're good, right? We like that quick satisfaction because we recognize if it's gonna take time and time and time again, we're gonna give up on it really quickly. I think that's the same for service. We want that quick satisfaction. And a lot of times we're not gonna get that. But God reminds us here, if anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides. I've loved you so much. I've given you the strength. I'm gonna provide for you because you're pouring out your love to others. I think there's a really cool example for us that, and it's in a man named Adoniram Judson. This is my boy, Adoniram Judson. Hey, what up, dude? It's my boy. So Adoniram Judson, he was a missionary in the 1800s. And some of you are like, I didn't come here for history class. You're unplugging right now. No, stay with me right here. 1800s, he was a missionary in Burma. Burma in this time was chaos. It was a war going on. People, folks were getting in prison all the time. People did not like each other in that time. It was chaos there. But Adoniram Judson was faithful to God. But it took some time. Seven years. Think about that. Seven, every throw seven. Throw seven. It's God's number. Seven. Throw it up. Seven years. It took seven years for one person to accept Christ with Adoniram Judson. Seven years. I'm not going to lie. If it was me, about year two, I'd be looking at my watch. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out. Year four, shoot, I've been gone. Year six, I get over here, I'm probably doing something else. Seven years, one person. Can we do that on our own? I don't think so. Okay, let, let's think about it. 10 years. T after seven years, you only got one. 10 years has got to be a big growth. 18 people. 10 years, over 3,600 days. 18 people. I would have quit. I would have given up. I would have packed my bag and say, hey, this is not where God has for me. Only 18 people after 10 years of my life, I'm out. Bad and Iron Jetson was different. He stayed for 22 years. He was imprisoned a lot of the time. He was in the middle of a civil war. He was all these different things. 22 years goes by. He's able to translate the entire Bible into the Burmese language that they'd never had before. And 7,000 people came to know Christ. Big jump from 10 years to 22. 18 to 7,000, that's pretty good. 63 churches were also started. This is a man that recognized it wasn't by his strength, but it was only by God's. I only pray that I can have that same kind of heart and recognizing God's love fuels me so much that I can continue to love the nations. This is the third thing God provides. God provides us with the unique gifts to serve. He provides us with these unique gifts to serve. He, he talks about this in verse 10. He says, Just as each of you has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. He says it real quick. He's like, Psh, I don't even got to tell you all this more often. Use the gift God has given you. I can look out in this crowd right now and say, every single person here has a gift. You have a gift, you have a talent, you have an interest. And God's saying right here, use it as a good steward for me. That's what he's asking us to do. Use it as a good steward of me. Use these gifts, these interests, these talents that you have. Now, I can guarantee every single person in here has an interest because I made a connection with all y'all, except for y'all little crazy folks in the back that ain't you know, got nothing cool in your lives. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna find it later. But you have an interest. It just might take a little work to find out how you can use that to serve. If you like to cook, not many people sat down for cooking, but we're gonna go for it anyways. If you like to cook, make a meal for someone. Invite them over. Have a conversation about what Jesus has done in your life. If you're a sports player, you're on a team, that is a great group of people that would love to hear the name of Jesus Christ. Use that gift to serve others. If you like shoes, give away some of your shoes. And it's not one of those drop and run, like, ooh, I'm out. Go, find someone, get to know them, give them to them, and talk about how these are cool and all, but these are gonna break and these are gonna die eventually. But talk about the incredible work of Jesus, how that's never gonna fail us. 
You can use all of our interests in every way possible to serve. Because God gave us the framework. All these things are within his kingdom and within his righteousness. And if we do them through love, it's never going to fail. God says, I've got your back. I'm going to strengthen you if you're going through my framework. You're pursuing my kingdom, pursuing my righteousness, and you're loving others. I've got you. Now, there's a reason we talked about this last. There's a reason I talked about how God showed us to use our gifts last is because he doesn't say you have to only serve in ways that you're interested. He didn't say, oh, 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 use your interests and only use your interests. If you don't like it, don't do it. That's not what he said. He said, serve first through love. No one here likes to clean bathrooms. Some of y'all might be crazy back there. Y'all might like, no one here likes to do that, but serve anyways. Even if we aren't interested, even if we don't have that gifting, even if we don't like to do it, God still says and challenges us to serve through love, pursue his kingdom, pursue his righteousness through love and I will strengthen you. But what a cool, cool time it is where you are able to say, man, I love this. This doesn't feel like sacrifice. Service is sacrifice. We've talked about that last week. But it's a really cool opportunity. If you love something so much and you're able to use that to serve others through it, you're able to say, man, this really doesn't feel like work. I'm loving this. Because serving the Lord is exciting. He's made us to want to serve it, or serve him. That's how he created us. It's natural for us to do that originally, but our sin and our pride gets in the way of that. But it's a special time and be grateful for those times where God has given you a gift and you're able to use it to serve others and bring others to God's kingdom by living righteously like he does. Really listen in here. This is the last thing I want to end with. If you forget everything else, this is where I want you to be. God has asked us to provide three things. He's provided for us three things in 1 Peter. Three things. And God looks at us and says, provide one for me. I've given you three. Give me one. What does he ask you to provide? Provide your life as a sacrifice to the service of God and others through love. He asks us to provide one thing. Give ourselves. Give everything you have. Why? I did it myself. That's what God would say. I gave my life for you. I sent my son. I sent myself to live that perfect sacrifice as our example. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us as a perfect sacrifice. He's worthy. He deserves it. And we deserve to give it to him. So as we leave here today, I want us to think through, how am I able to seek his righteousness, seek his kingdom, using my gifts that he's blessed me with that only came from him, through love, being strengthened by him alone to serve others? That's the question you have to answer. I can only give you the, the framework of how to make that a rhythm. It's on you to make the rhythm. And it's gonna take dedication. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take consistency. But that's my prayer for us tonight. We started with standing. We're gonna end with standing. So everybody please stand with me. This is where we get to put aside, like, I forget your interests, what we're having. This is gonna be a special one where this is my prayer for us as a community, as Scotts Hill students, as high schoolers. This is my prayer that we can do this. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be painful. It's gonna be difficult. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna read verse 11 one more time. And then after that, I'm gonna ask that you read it along with me all out loud, all right? And when I read this this first time, put yourself in this. Put your heart in this. Let me read it for us. If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength only God provides so that God may be glorified through Christ Jesus in everything. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. You understand what we're doing? Can you do that with me? All right, let's do it together. If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified 
through Jesus Christ and everything. In him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen.